Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Yeah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Ah! Here we are, folks, in the studio in Midtown Manhattan. How do you like that? Those are load-bearing walls, Jerry. No, I don't think they are. No, those I aren't coming a, down. I heard, Look at that. I heard a snowplow. That's We're on the true. 17th floor. I heard a guy queef next door. So who knows? The walls are thin, paper thin. We're in a high-rise. I've never been in a high-rise. I have a key card. I went boop, boop, and the guy went, well, I'm such an idiot. I still stopped. I was like, hey, I have this. And the guy's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I did the same thing. I was like, that's my face. I, I work here. Uh, yeah. And the guy's like, I don't care. Swipe in. And then the lady, the dentist lady, the, the fat, she looks like, uh, who's the uh, Georgia people lady? Huh? The fat Georgia lady. People hate her. They love her. Oh, uh, Kathy Bates? <laughs> no, she's black. Oh, Aretha Avery. Franklin. Avery. Avery. <laughs> Avery, uh... I don't know, Avery. Avery Island? Sean Avery. Um, you know her. <laughs> the fucking lady. She's making all the waves. They wanted to be president. Lizzo. She's got the curly hair. No, who is Lizzo? Oprah. Lizzo's a real fat rapper lady who plays, I think, the cello. Or the flute? What? Maybe the flute. What? You got to pull this video up when you can. She's, she's a fat lady who twerks while fluting. Hold on. What is her name? But Doug seriously, Flutie. You know who I'm talking about. Oprah. She's fat. Oprah. She's cool. She's good, I think. Kirstie Alley. Stacey Abrams. Thank oh, you. Oh, the politician. In the house. That's the one. Yeah. I <laughs> see. I, I see. I thought you were talking about some singer, Georgia on my mind. No. Okay. Uh, but Peaches. anyways. Oh, yeah. The lady at the desk looks like her. Ah. And I said, hey, I, I'm new here. I work here. And I, I go, that's my friend over there. And she, I think she was like, I don't care. Yeah, which is good. I don't want to chat with them anyway. Get get me in, get me out. It's weird, though. Well, we have a job. I don't know what camera. Where are the cameras? Is this my close-up? Yeah, hell yeah. All right. Sorry about the shirt. It's about 150 degrees in here. This was supposed to be like an under situation. It's burning my retinas there. That is quite the yellow. I like yellow. Makes your teeth look whiter. My, <laughs> my wife says I look good in yellow. She's like, I love you in yellow. You got to wear yellow every day with the yellow. Really? I don't know what it means. No one looks good in yellow. She's lying to you. I think she's colorblind. No, I think people could look good in yellow. You should try a yellow. I can't do yellow. I, I, I was a bedwetter growing up. Everything I own was yellow. Well, you got to hydrate if it's coming out yellow. That's true. You ever eat a bunch of vitamins? You piss, and it looks like uh, Kool Aid down there. I've been taking vitamin D. I'm not. So, I don't want to get jump right into the COVID stuff, but <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm recovering. Uh oh, Shelby's got his mask off. You're about Whoa! to get COVID, bro. This is this is scary. Your raw dog in the air. I've been doing a uh, zinc. I just bought a big whopper full of zinc, and not to mention, first of all, it's sixty eight dollars for a bunch of zinc and zinc. Secondly, <laughs> bye bye bye. Secondly, I think it's cured boys. me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think it cured me. I never got COVID this whole time. I've been going to orgies. I've been blowing little boys and going to the kennel and petting random dogs. Nothing. Well, I got to tell you, folks, folks at home, get out there and get Omicron. Get I feel it. alive. I'm dying to get it. I'm, I'm jealous you got it. Get it and spread it. That's my new motto. I say give it to everyone. We should have Omicron parties because everyone I know is shaking in their boots. They're yep. calling me. Should I go to the cellar? Should I go to my mother's? Should I eat my dad out? And I got to tell you, I just gave it to Sarah's mom, her sister, my parents, my niece. I gave it to everybody. Wow. A few people on a plane, a couple bagel shops, <laughs> and uh, I feel like 100 bucks. Man, you're like uh, Norton the virus. You're all, you're all over everybody's desktop. Norton. Was it Norton? Jim? There was an antivirus Norton. Oh, I, I always see that. I don't know anything about computers. I don't either. The virus, once I got a virus, I would just throw the thing out the window. I couldn't handle it. Yeah, I had the same thing. But I think the Apple doesn't get viruses. Isn't that right? Well, there's something with cookies. What the hell is the cookie? <laughs> do you no accept idea. those? I have no idea. I, I accept, accept everything. I do, too. Bring it on. <laughs> cookie, jizz, right in my face, whatever it is. I'll eat it. I'm quite progressive. Did you ever play Okie okay Cookie? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, that's what, that was my major. <laughs> yeah. I was in a frat for about eight minutes. I don't know what a major is, honestly. A major, a minor, a bachelor, a PhD, a, a an HGP, a sergeant, HPV. I got that was Major Dad. That was a show in the eighties. But I watched that show. I thought it stunk. It was horrible. I never got it. Okay, your dad's in the military. Who gives a fuck? Where's the comedy? 
my dad was in the military too. He, he just, uh, you know, raped me. But I think they come up with a title first. Yes, Major Dad. What if the dad was a major in the army? Major Dad. He's a major. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's like Print who, it. who's the boss? That's a great title. We'll work around that. Yes, two gay men or whatever. Three men and a baby. There's a real title that gives you half the premise right there. Mm-hmm. But wait a minute, Major. What the hell is it? Oh, your major is you go into college and you go, hey, I'm Jim, Jim, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I'd like a degree. And they go, uh, they go, uh, well, what's your major? And you go, film. And they go, okay, you can. You don't have to take math. You don't have to take science. You can take English. But you have to take other stuff. That's just the major. That's the major. But you can get around the other stuff if you major in something retarded. So is there only two, a major and a minor? Or is there mediums? There's no mead. So what do you do? You I, I go don't know in. If there's a minor. Is there a minor? I minored. Yeah, I hear that all the time. Oh, I, I yeah. fucked a minor. Yeah, R. Kelly. <laughs> they say I majored in in you know Tompkins Square Park and I minored in Central Park. Right, right. Or well, whatever. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I guess I never minored. How come you didn't minor? I don't know. I didn't have the hat. <laughs> um. Yeah. All right. I majored in film because I didn't have to take math. Wow. And did you graduate? Oh yeah, barely. Skin of my uh, foreskin. <laughs> but I just. Um, I went to college, failed out of three colleges, by the way. Not proud of it. My parents made me finish because they figured I was going nowhere. Like, get a degree. My parents made me finish on their face <laughs> last night. And then uh, I moved to New York. I said, fuck college. I'm moving to New York to do comedy. And they said, you got to finish. So I finished online. It was the easiest thing I've ever done. Oh, nice. Should have done the a, whole thing online. Did you get a cap? No cap. No gown either? No gown. Who needs it? I had the high school one. Do you say gown? I always say D, but it's well, gown. No D. Uh, Cap and gown? Gown. I don't know why I just want to say gowned. Maybe it's past tense. You got gowned. Yeah. That was fun to throw it, though. Yeah. I, we did, I was nervous to throw it. I was such a little bitch at graduation. I was like, I want my cap, though. So I kind of ah. did like a fake, like, oh. Oh, that's a good point. And I had that's all folks written on it. Hey. Yeah, not bad. I had the N-word. I thought you were going to make fun of me. Oh, I like that. What about this thing? Uh, the tassel. The tassel. Remember you kept the tassel for a while? People had it in their like, rear view mirror, Oof. like, hey, look at this. I graduated. Oof, and after yeah. about six months, you're like, yeah, you might want to move on now. Yes, it's that in the car, the high school ring. Get out of here with oh, the ring. Oh, the people that wore the ring. If you're listening and you wore a ring, stop listening. We don't want to be associated with you. No. The class ring people. I hate the, I'd rather you hang a Nuva ring from the, from the <laughs> rear view. At least I know you're getting laid. Get up and get out of here. I'd rather you have the ring DVD around your <laughs> finger. You like that movie? Ah, I'm not a big horror cunt. I didn't really care. She has wet hair. Who cares? I know. She comes out of a well. That's a good thing, right? The girl came out of a well. Good. She's saved. It's all kids and water in these movies. Kids and water. A bit. It's always like a baby going, <laughs> and I'm like, I'll just kick the baby or swim. It's never like a buff black guy with a knife, and you're like, well, that's actually scary. You well, know? Candyman <laughs> was that. Ah, uh, Candyman. That's the one movie, but I think they were, like, shut this down. What was with the bees, though? I didn't get the bees. I don't know what's up with bees. But uh, my girl was scary. I like a D. They had bees. Huh? My girl. <laughs> Macaulay Culkin. Oh, remember? the that bees. That was scary. Yes. Because I was the same age as Culk. Right. And he gets eaten by bees. And I was like, holy shit. That was That's heavy. That's terrifying. You know, my childhood dog, Shadow, he was a little black thing. That's racist. Yeah, well, he was on welfare and didn't take care of his kids. But he got eaten by ants. Pups. <laughs> Didn't take care of his pups, but uh, yeah, he was a good, good, good dog. But uh, one day I came outside, he was on an ant pile twitching, and the ants had swarmed. Yeah, I remember hearing this story before, and uh, it sounded suspicious. Well, I might have, uh, what do you call it, uh, not divulged. Superimposed. Exaggerated. What's the yeah. word? Accentuated. <laughs> Hyperboled. Hyperbole. But he must have died of a disease, then the ants got him. They no. couldn't just overtake a dog. Well, he was little. How little? And these are fire ants. Ah, mm-hmm. you didn't say fire. Aha. Uh-huh. Yes, they weren't. These weren't worker ants. What's the other ant? You only hear about fire and nothing. Well, it's carpenter ants. Is that and one? That sounds like a working ant. I like a carpenter ant. Carpenter ant. That's a big one. Ah, like a big thick ant. My ant's pretty big. <laughs> I but, got a thick ant. Though. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you got fire ant. They're all red. They're they're vicious. They got the those claws. Mm. Remember, uh, honey, I shrunk. Loved Honey, I Shrunk. That kid, the kid from Overboard and that thing. Big. And big. That kid was hot, and he reminds me of Matt Wayne. They're very similar. I can see that. They got red hair. They're funny. Plus, Matt Wayne loves those movies. Shelby's on the move, which scares me. The 80s funny kid was great. 
I mean, that kid was amazing. And I looked him up. He was in a band. And I listened to the band. They're not so hot. Ah, mm -hmm. I hope he doesn't hear this. But uh, Call in if you know his name. I forget his name. I looked it up recently. He's fantastic. By the way, the littlest kid from Overboard is the kid in Home Alone who's talking to the van people. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The van people. The <laughs> No, this is a horror movie. Yeah, yeah. Remember when they count the Talk heads, they count the neighbor. The neighbor kid comes over. Oh, yeah, the neighbor kid. He's the little kid, Joey, in Overboard. Uh -huh. Ah! I mean, we're deep into the weeds here, but... The 80s, baby. Love the 80s. Good times. And the 90s. 80s were all suburb. Did you watch Quentin Tarantino on Rogan by any chance? I didn't, but it's it's on my list. I listened to him on uh, Marin, which didn't give me the juice. No good juice. No. But, uh, I agree about that. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, juice. But uh, yeah, he did uh, Rogan, and he was talking about how the 80s movies were just cookie cutter, suburb, horse shit. Happy ending, you know, uh, popcorn anal bead. Sure. But then in the 90s, they're like, let's get crazy. Yes. And I hope comedy has that. Well, I think that it became independent again. And that's what's happening, I ah. hope, with movies again. I got an independent movie coming out myself. You got that right. But uh, I think they were like, all right, enough of this shit. And now it's happening again with all the blockbusters and the, the sequels and the horse shit. Yeah, the, so uh, hopefully the, the, the superhero. It gives birth to uh, some more independent shit, some, and, some anal, some blood, some rape. Yes, let's bring it back. And comedy is uh, full of anal, but comedy's... YouTube and podcasts and internet and queef time and all that shit. So but comedy is great right now. The yeah. underground. Yeah, you got you, me, Sam, Kramer, the butler, Shane. Right. All Stop those Rose folks. is doing one. Ron On's doing one. Everybody's got these cool specials and uh, it's, it's very exciting. By the way, you have a great special on Netflix right now, which I got to say thanks because all these people are discovering my you special got, that yes. never watched. Yes, that's great. <clears throat> By the way, I clicked over. I don't want to watch my special or see anything about it because it makes me feel weird, but sure, I just put the cursor on it, and you came up as the first joke. Really? Yeah, like, you know, you go, boop, boop, right, oh, right, Oh, like right. the preview. Yeah, and then the preview is you, which oh, is funny because it's not even the right season, but hey. Whatever. It's all the same to them, I guess, but uh, we watched it New Year's Eve Eve. Sarah and I sat up. We had a couple chuckles. My dad watched a couple bits, ah. and he's like, oh, so this is the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, he went to bed. <laughs> this is your boyfriend. But, um, yeah, it was great. Oh, it was thanks. exciting. So everyone, go make sure you watch it. I think it juices the number. I don't know what it does. It but juices. They, they see the number. They're seeing the numbers, even though we're not. They, and, uh, they're, it does too, they're too smart to show us the numbers, because then we got a little bargaining chip. We got a little leverage. Right. But uh, it. I got a ton of great messages. I want to thank the Jews out there, the queefs, the fatties, the, the gays. Thanks for the love, and I got a little bit of hate, but I knew it was coming. Yeah, what you can know, you do? This guy's hate? a transphobe. This guy <laughs> fucked his dad. You know, two of those are true. Sure, whatever. But uh, by the way, I have to say, I was very impressed with Janelle James. That was the only one, other one I watched. Yeah. I laughed out loud. Really? There's some funny stuff in there. I was there like, oh, go. damn. I mean, I watched like eight minutes because it was like two o'clock in the morning, but... I'll watch the rest at some point. But, you got to uh, see this Brian Simpson cat. I haven't got to the set. We're going to watch all of them. Very funny. But I got to tell you, we got rid of Netflix. So I had to watch it my parents, and we left. But we might bring it back. What, what did you just uh, had a little moment of uh, re responsibility where you said, hey, I got to get to reading? Well, it's on Sarah's account. I mean, this is like not even good Potter. But it's on Sarah's account. She's trying to save some money. When we got the ah. showtime so we could watch the Comedy Store doc. Uh -huh. And then I hate most of the Netflix originals, and the oh, ones I want to see, I watch in the theater. Right. So it's kind of like, we never even watch it. I watch Criterion, I watch HBO, I watch iTunes, I just buy movies because I'm a compulsive idiot. Well, if you want to come over to the Steel Cable Island, I know, there's I know always room for you on I, the peninsula. Well, I got a thing you might have heard of called Morals, so <clears throat> I don't have the Netflix, but uh, maybe I'll get it back. All right, get it back. Or you could do what I do and just use Chuck's password. When you really think about Netflix, I hate to say it because I'd like them to buy something for me at some point, but sure. they're not, so it kind of stinks. Yeah, it's not great. They got a few movies that are great, some of your favorite movies, but I'm like, I already own these movies. And then there's the Netflix originals, mostly stink. Some are good. A guy sent me a list of very good ones. And then the stand-up is fun, but... Uh, you know. Yeah, they got the good they got the Sebastians and the Seinfelds and the Burrs and the yeah. the the other guy. But uh yeah, the HBO is the the primo for just the lunch movies, the great series, the good docu stuff. Maybe I shouldn't be shitting on Netflix. 
Ah, they get a lot of it. They don't hear this. Yeah, I don't think they'll hear it. No. The comedy is great. The comedy's solid. Comedy is great. They have obviously. The, the market cornered, <laughs> mm-hmm. as they say. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, it was a thrill to watch. It was very exciting. I'm proud of you. I thought it was hilarious. And the guy with the comedy shirt in the front yes. row was exciting. Some gays came out. It, yeah. It's funny how what people get offended by. I got the one guy doing the whole rant on me about how I'm a transphobe. And I did a whole thing about the Holocaust and how uh, the guy's taking photos. Who's the guy taking photos of the Holocaust? Right. Like that To me, that was way. And then I was like, any Jews here? Get them. Like, it's wildly anti-Semitic. But that's fine. That's a joke. It's only when you talk about their thing that it's no longer a joke. Isn't that wacky? Of course, it's and not, wacky. And not to mention Brian Simpson had a whole retard chunk, and uh, that's fine. I don't know. The whole thing's uh, it's all very topsy-turvy, <laughs> but uh, glad to have it out there. And Now, here's the clinker, though. Clink it. I did the Milwaukee Improv over New Year's, had to do the whole toast and the countdown and the anals. Well, that's fun. Yeah, it was fun. Milwaukee, kooky town, but... I got to tell you, we talked about this before the break, going out there with nothing. I mean, these people, we saw the Netflix, woo, I see them in the lobby, stand-ups was killer, and then you're like, well, there's 30 minutes that's out. Yeah. I, I got to go into a new year with a new hour, with a no shit, no jokes, just half-baked ideas. I'm up there going, what's up with the toadstools? It's not a toad. It's not a stool. <laughs> I'm dying up there. I had no ideas. It was brutal. That's not bad. And, but then they go, this guy, this guy got a Netflix? Who's this chooch? Yeah, it's a little bit scary, and then we're, because of the Omicron, we're like losing places to work out. Uh-huh. You know, I just lost. I had to cancel seven spots to try not to get Omicron, then I got it anyways. Had to cancel Houston. I'll be back February 15th. <laughs> By the way, I canceled Houston because I was like, I feel a little wacky. I tested negative, but I don't want to be a bitch, but whatever. I'll just cancel, and then it turns out I had it, so I'm glad I canceled. I would have given everyone in the room uh, Omicron. You did the right thing, Fatty. <laughs> but anyways, I'll be back there February 15th. But yeah, it's scary, and, and you have to... Try to cram out as much as you can before. I'm going to release mine in March, and I'm like, holy shit, how am I going to do this? So, yeah. I will figure it out. Yeah, I did a lot of Q&A, a lot of like Milwaukee stuff. Like, what's up with Wisconsin, huh? Cheese curds. Oh, boy. Uh, Rittenhouse, huh? <laughs> that got me about 11 seconds. What about this? If you're home, list- a lot of people listen to every episode. They Ooh. know the show. If you hear something that we've talked about in the past that feels like a bit... I love it. Email us. Reach out and go, I hey, love it. every once in a while, I'll get like a comedian will write, you do that on stage? Yes. That was hilarious. Yes. So please shoot us uh, an idea. Not your own ideas. No, God, no. We don't want that trash. Sometimes people email me and go, hey, uh, I'm a bartender in, uh, you know, uh, fucking Cleveland. Yeah. Sandusky, Ohio. And I got a bit about fingering kids on the sidelines. <laughs> That's and topical. I'm like, I'm it's good. regional. I don't, I don't need a bit from you. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. No bits. No bits. Thank you. Thank you. We're all chock full. We're all loaded up here. So, but thanks for the love. I got to write some new stuff. It's coming. Um, and uh, well, I think I think Omicron's gonna <whistles> peak and then <laughs> plummet. I think we'll be all back to normal. But I don't want to speak out of anal. It's gonna peak this week, uh, and I'm a geek. It's, it's all gonna be <laughs> yeah, fleek. It's gonna be great. The Greeks invented anal, and uh, oh yeah, how do you speak? Uh, cheek to through cheek. my cheeks. Yeah, <laughs> spread squeak. those cheeks. One cheek squeak. Ah, uh-huh. that's a funny term. That's good. <laughs> You ever I heard like that one? It. One cheek squeak. Never heard that. You never heard that? No, I like it. Oh, it's fun. That's when you. Uh, I've heard sitting on a duck. Ah, uh, by the bay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm gay. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Native Deodorant, baby. It's a new year, and who doesn't want to make some easy changes to their personal hygiene routine to make it a little cleaner? That's where Native comes in, baby. Love the Native. Great sense. Great feel. I keep a bunch around the house. I use them. The lady uses them. I got it on right now. Woo-wee! That's nice. Aluminum-free deodorant and body washes are never made with parabens or sulfates and are both cruelty-free. Also offers sensitive and plastic-free options. The sensitive formula is made without baking soda for those with more sensitive skin. And smelling good it ain't just limited to your pits with Native's all-new body wash. Their body washes have a rich lather that leaves skin feeling moisturized and conditioned long after you shower. Kick off the new year uh, with Native. And they partner with Baked by Melissa with a collection of scents inspired by their cupcake creations. Woo-wee! 
All right, smell a little sweeter with scents like tie-dye vanilla, cupcake, mint cookie cupcake, fresh peach, and ginger lemonade. Think I just got my period. This year, up your personal hygiene routine with Native. Go to nativedo.com slash Tuesdays with Stories. That's a mouthful. Or use promo code Tuesdays with Stories at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's one word. Tuesdays with Stories, one word. That's nativedeo.com slash Tuesdays with Stories or use promo code Tuesdays with Stories at checkout for 20% off. You got it, folks. Get in there, feel better, and smell better. Native. That's right, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Raycon. What's your New Year's resolution? Go to the gym more, travel more, write the great American novel. That was already done by Dr. Seuss. Whatever way you challenge yourself this new year, there's no better way to do it than with a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears. Mm. I absolutely love Raycon. I love the way they fit. It's that HD sound. I don't know nothing about anything, but I know I don't leave my house without my Raycon earbuds. They are the best in the business. Raycon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring audio with you because no matter how much you shake things up, you know they won't fall out of your ears. Their everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. Raycon offers eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life. That's insane. Right now, Tuesdays with Stories listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. That's buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. Support the folks that support us. For God's sakes, go to Raycon. Get yourself some earbuds now. Oh, back to the show. Woohoo! Hey, everybody. Now is the best time ever to join the Patreon. New year, new us, new you. This week, we're breaking down the Hamptons episode of the Seinfeld uh, television program, Musqueeze TV, coming out in two days, coming at you. We also have one we did. Watched all these great music videos, yes. the 80s and 90s, share. Classic. We watched Onyx, I think. And, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Men we, Without Hats. We, uh, a bunch of Public them. Enemy. We went all in on the rap. We hit every genre, rap, rock, share in a two-piece bikini or whatever the hell that that was I've came. Aerosmith. It got a little dicey too, so you're yeah. gonna want to get there. This is a little edgier, a little spicier, a little sweeter, a little sexier. Yeah. And we're doing one a week. This week is Seinfeld. Last week was music videos. We got the new studio, and we're here to use it. We got to pay for this fucking thing. You got that so right. So we're doing it, or making it worth it, is what I mean. Whatever. And uh, <laughs> we want to thank everybody that's been on the Patreon all along. Yeah, I mean, phew, the names are, but it's Ari Shafir, it's Burke Kreischer, it's Nikki Glazer, it's Michelle Wolf. The Giannis. hits keep coming, Giannis. Chris D. Yeah, Bennington. there you go. There you go. Yeah, we got some uh, heavy hitters there, folks. A lot of great stuff. Tell a friend. Share it. Spread the cheeks. Queef it up. Join now. See you next week. <laughs> so how was the holiday? I gotta get. I gotta get this Germany story. Oh, in. we got Germany. We teased it, and then we had two weeks off. <laughs> and I gotta try. It's difficult because. You want a fresh story, and of course, everybody knows you fucked me last recording, so Sorry. it's not going to be fresh, but I got to try to work it up, because it was one of these things that bothered me for about a week, and now it's been three weeks. Wait, wait, the sto- not doing the story bothered you? Not doing the, no, not that. Oh. The actual thing that happened in the story, oh. the contents of the story. All right, I can't wait. Hit me with the story, then. Let's bother. Hot All right. bother. I might have to check a couple notes, or maybe I'll just go from memory. You got it up here. I can see it. But I just I don't want to miss anything big. I'll never be able to find it. Oh, my God. I got COVID, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, that yellow. It's a lot. Woo. Something came out of my mouth? No, the yellow shirt. Ah, right. Yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, all right. All right, so I told you about the pharmacist with the big tits, so I want to fuck if my wife Yes, dies. yes, the hot farm. Uh, big pharma. Charge. Okay. Can't believe you went to Germany. That's still pretty wild. You 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 squeaked in, fatty. Because oh uh, what a squeak that was! That was that would not be happening with Omicron. Yeah, it was a uh, a two beak squeak. So, <coughs> Whew, that didn't sound good. That was a lot of semen. No, we're back. Um, so you know how it is. You've flown across the country, a different country during COVID. This is a few weeks ago, pre Omicron. Sure, went to Germany. Squeeze it in. And Omicron was on the move at the time. I think uh-huh. it was in Germany at the time. It was moving around. A couple cases here, a couple cases there. I think London was getting hit. So you got to get 
This is when Biden said you need a negative test to fly back to America. Got That's it. That's like the new rule. We thought you needed it to go to Germany. I spent like 300 bucks on a fucking PCR rapid. I hate the rapid. Got to the desk, and I, the guy said, do you have your negative test? And I said, we took it, but we haven't got the results yet. And the guy was like, just go ahead. Ah. Because he's like a Delta guy. Right. The he doesn't give a shit. The whole system is whacked out. It's all out to lunch. It's all pipes. So to fly back to the States, you got to get a test. But all the tests were closed, whatever, doesn't matter. So the night before we leave, we're like, we'll get a test in the morning. Mm. And we <coughs> make appointments. They have testing at the airport. But now, you know the feel. You know me. I'm a, I like to, I don't fly by the seat of my pants too much. You fly three hours early. I like to have my ducks in a row, as it were. Mm. So I'm, like, in a row. I'm going to the airport to fly back to America mm. with no test. Wow. And you require a test. Wow. So I'm like, oh my God, what were we doing? But it was our last day on vacation. We don't want to wait in line to get a goddamn test. Sure, hate the test. So Sarah's like, I made two appointments, one appointment for each of us. Then I go in, I make my own appointment. So I'm like, I want extra appointments. Okay. So we can get there, because I don't want to get stuck in Germany. No, I've heard that story. Berlin is nice, but it's seven days. I want to go home. So we're flying to Paris first, then the United States. We get to the airport, and everything's foreign language. Mm -hmm. We leave early, get out there. We find the testing site. Big sign. No rapid tests here. Aye, aye, aye. So I'm like, oh, my God, we're stuck. I'm trying to use this fucking meditation Buddhism shit. I'm like, worst case scenario, we're stuck in Berlin for a couple days. We're having a great time. Who cares? We're not going to die. What is it? 14 days, though, isn't it? Well, that's just, well, no, only to get a test. I we're not, see. We don't have COVID. We I just need see. a negative test. Good point. But we have to get the test. Then there is the chance that you test positive because we've been out gallivanting in Germany. Hey, to gallivant. So I walk in, and over there in Europe, they're wacky. The guy has like the full suit. He looks like fucking Marty McFly when oh, he goes to the past. He's got wow. the, the suit and the thing. Yeah, yeah. The uh, what was that? The plutonium. Plutonium. He's got glove. He has those weird shoes that like Mark Wahlberg uses yes, to assassinate the, the the depart. Yeah, he's got a hairnet on the whole thing, like sunglasses. He looks like a fucking idiot, like a Martian. <laughs> I walk in. I go, hey, I, I need a negative test. I'm from New York. It says you have no rapids, but we signed up for a rapid. And mm. he's like, you fly today? And I'm like, well, we're flying in like an hour. I need the test. Oh, God. And he goes, all right, 50 euros, blah, blah, blah. We get the test. They jam it way up there. I hate the jam. So I then like we jelly. go over. We go, thank you so much. We jog over to the Delta desk. You know me. I'm diamond now. ooh -wee! Straight to the front of the line. Talk to a lady. It's one of these ladies. I could just feel that she liked me. Okay. I liked her. She that, liked me. That's rare. She gets me all. She packs the bag. She goes, you're diamond. Here's your passes to the fucking, uh, whatever you call it, the lounge. I love a lounge. <clears throat> she goes, uh, all right, well, now give me those negative tests. And I'm like, we don't have them yet. We mm. just got tested. We're waiting for them any minute. And she's like, I'm sorry. I can't let you on there until you get the negative test. She goes, wait right there. And as soon as you get the negative test, Come right back to the front of the line. That's helpful. I go, okay, great. And she's German. <clears throat> she's German. Okay. Kind of hot, older, probably like 70, but like, I'd fuck her. Hey, I love an old germ. So uh, I got some in my throat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we sit there, we wait. I'm refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. While I'm refreshing, I watch the Delta line out the door. There's uh -oh. like 40 people in line. Uh-oh. But- Sky Priority still open. So finally, we get the negative test. We go to the Sky Priority line, and we're next. And the lady sees me, because she likes me. She goes, move to this line. Move oh, behind. You're here. I love this coos. So I move over. Then this lady over here, some random lady in line, goes, hey, hey, hey. The line's back there. Ooh, Germany. And I go, uh, hey, listen, uh, I'm Sky Priority. Diamond. You got that right. I'm in the priority lane. Suck and on she's that. she's like, well, why do you get to go first? And I look at the lady, and the lady goes, uh, the lady at the desk pipes in. Even though she's working on one lady, she goes, he's next. He was here. He's priority. Wow. And I go, do me a favor. Don't worry about me. Ooh, you like that? Ooh, look at this uh, ugly American you coming like in that? and showing people who's who. We got and a I, little what for. And I got to tell you, Sarah went like, ooh, you sounded like Dirty Harry just then. <laughs> I mean, like her pussy, <laughs> she started dripping on the floor. I'm ooh. telling you, these ladies love this. Give this lady a beach towel, baby. We got to stop. <laughs> you send a little sass towards a 55-year-old German lady. It's hot. Uh, I used to hit them. I go, don't worry about me, young lady. And then, by the way, the set, there's two windows. Mm. And window one opens up at this moment mm -hmm. and we go like this so she's not even in like the back of the line she's still next she's still ahead of me she's a german karen i'm like you're not priority yes yeah, she's karen 
And so I go, she goes over there and I go, you f-, I'm like staring her down like you twat. I'm yeah. priority. I was here first. You're still next. And this is the loser line. Yes. I'm a winner. Suck it, Nazi. So I go up there. I say, hey, thanks a lot. And of course, the ego, you just want to like get in front of that lady. And I want to beat her through security. Yes. I want to beat her up. I want to fuck her husband in the ass. Yes. Never saw her again. But <clears throat> get on the plane, fly to Paris. We land in Paris. What's now, that, a two hour, one hour? Not too long. I don't know, hour and a half, hour 40. But okay. we were delayed on the ground. Mm. So now we got to hustle because we have a connection to New York, obviously. You got that right. We land in Paris. But in Paris, you go through passport. What's it called? Custom. Customs in Paris. So you don't, you know, whatever. That's Because you're leaving Europe. <laughs> you want to get the customs over with. But you, now you got to connect and cust. Exactly. And you still have to go to customs in New York. In, America too. True. Ugh, what a nightmare. So we got we're delayed. We got that says boy. Also, these international flights they board like an hour early. Mm-hmm. So you get that thing that says boarding now. Boarding. Right. Boarding. So and you're hustling. like fuck. We're boarding. So we're like running. But everybody on this flight is also going to New York. So right. everyone's running together. Oh. It's like fucking Home Alone. Yes, Kevin. Run, run, Rudolph. Yeah. So we all run. Then we get to the passport line, and it's long. Ah. Uh. And we're like shit. And I'm going, all right, there's three windows open. It moves fast. Because only they just go, okay, great. They stamp your papers. Sure, papers, papers. And then let you go. So I'm like, ah, fuck, this line is so long. I don't want to miss my flight. But worst case, and I, once again, I go, worst case scenario, we're stuck in Paris. The line's going to move. They're boarding now, but the flight doesn't leave for another hour. All right, all right. You're good. You're gravy. So here's where it gets jizzy oh god put it on my back so we're in line and then everyone else from the flight because we're at the front because we're a diamond diamond so the rest of the people from our flight are arriving behind us mm. so there's like three aisles worth of line in front of us and now there's like two lanes worth behind us oh so you're in a good spot here <laughs> pretty good we're in the middle of the pack okay you're dust and diamond so we're sitting there going all right this is moving it'll move it'll be fine i'm very calm in anxious moments Really? Anxious people are very good in high-stress situations. Ah, We've been preparing for this our whole lives. That's true. It's the anticipation of anxiety that really makes you anxious. That's right. Once you're in the mix, you can deal with it. I'm fine. I told you the story when they took the the stitches out of my gums. Uh I was like, I'm so nervous. I'm going to pass out. The guy's like, all right, just relax. And then he did it. He's like, you're the best patient I've ever had. Wow. Because in the moment, you're like... Yes. It's like driving a race car. Before, you're like, I'm driving a race car, oh my God. But then when you're in the car, you're zenned in. I'm Paul Newman. Ah, Newman's own. Newman died. So, <laughs> so we're in the line, middle of the pack, just waiting, relaxing, trying to breathe. I'm like, we're going to make it. If we don't make it, we're stuck in Paris. What's the worst? That's not so bad. That sounds like a Woody Allen movie. Hey, we're stuck in Paris. That's not bad. I'll take it. So we're Whatever. sitting there, and then all of a sudden we hear, excuse me, coming through. We're now, our flight's leaving. Our flight's boarding. Uh-oh. Heads up. Who's this guy? We turn around. It's a Mac and Meyer. It's a guy with a little sidekick. Mac and, and Meyer? Well, it's a fun. Do you ever hear that, Mac and Meyer? No, I've heard Mac and Cheese. <laughs> Who's Mac and Meyer? That's delicious. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who Mac and Meyer. My family always said that. Hey, Mac and Meyer, get over here. Who was Mac and Meyer? Could you Google Mac and Meyer? Give Shelby? it a Goog. Must be a regional thing. Was there an origin? Maybe it was a family thing. It sounds like an '80s show. Mac and Meyer. Maybe like a. Maybe there was a Simon and Simon. I don't know Simon and Simon. Oh, I know Simon was, and Garfunkel. They're fantastic. Simon and Schuster. Who are they? That's the publishing. Oh, uh, the books. Yes. Yeah. What's Mac and Meyer? I don't know Mac and Meyer. <clears throat> well, whatever. I know Breck and Meyer. <laughs> Two assholes. Oscar Jerry Brockheimer. <laughs> so, don't you lose your Heimer? What's Oppenheimer. <laughs> oh, yeah, he invented the bomb, right? Yes, yes, I'm having one of those tonight. Enola Gay. Oh, uh, thank you. You got something? It was a sitcom from 1963. A 1963 sitcom. They somehow made 100 episodes of it. 100 wow, episodes. Pretty Mac good and Meyer. Run. Mac and Meyer. Mm-hmm. Who's in it? Anybody good? All right. Well, you think about it. My mother was born in 59. So she was four, so it must have been a show. Maybe her dad called her Mac and Meyer. A couple of repeats. You see it on Nick at Night. I but, got it. Checks but you out. need two people. So we're Mac and Meyer. All right. Uh, can I be Mac? I suppose you can be Mac. All right. I don't want to be Meyer. What is he, Jewish? I like a Jew. Take it. Um. Goodbye, Jews. Oh, yeah, Germany. That's where yes, I was. Yes, you're trying to get out. <laughs> well, Paris. That fits. So 
all of a sudden, these two assholes, they're cutting through the line, going, hey, hey we're, we got, a, we got, a, we got a, uh, a connection, connection, we're boarding, Who's and they're just guy? stepping through everybody. I don't like this, Jooch. And I go, what the fuck is this? Now, I'm just painting a picture here. I want everyone to have a clear picture. But also, you don't want to go German Karen on him. But he's stepping in front of everyone in line. Oh, okay, This okay. is different. This is different. I'm in the priority lane. There's two yes, lanes. Dustin there's Diamond. priority and there's no lane. I mean, there's the, your whatever lane. Loser lane. The priority lane has nobody in it. Right. This lady wanted me to get in the back of a line that I don't belong in. I see. So this is different. This is different. This guy, different there's only one line here. He's cutting everybody because uh-huh. he thinks he has priority. Right, but you're all going to the same place. We're all going to the same place. So at first... Everyone just starts letting them go. Everyone just goes, oh, shit, I guess. Because if you just do stuff, people just let you go. Confidence goes a long way. Now, I suspect this gentleman is of African-American persuasion. Mm, little guilt kicking in. And I suspect there might have been more pushback sooner if you'd uh-huh. just been a, a white Karen or yes, a white man. a white man. Hey, hey, toxic masculinity, honky, you guys get everything. White man, sit down. I think people are afraid of racial incidents, so nobody wants to say anything. Even in gay Perry. I think so. I figured it was only an American mm-hmm. queef, but I guess it's over there, too. I could be wrong. I'm just supposing. I like a but suppose. But people, I think the camera gets rolling, and you go, hey, back of the line, right. Blackie. They don't want to be that person. No, no, now you're on War- World Star getting uh, blown up on black Twitter. So everyone just kind of goes, hmm. Yeah. And this guy and his buddy, he's like, I don't care. I'm not being late. Sorry. I'm not missing another flight. I'm not missing this flight. And then finally, somebody two, goes, two, hey. Two, two guys? Two guys. Okay. And finally, somebody goes, but one was the aggressive. The other one was just kind of following along. Uh-huh. The alpha and the beta. And finally, I mean, there's still like two full rows behind us, but they're coming. Okay. And finally, you hear someone go, hey, what, what is this? What, what the hell? And he's like, sorry, I, I'm, 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 taking, I'm taking action. Whoa. And he comes all the way up to us, and I go, whoa, I'm on the New York flight, too. He's like, yeah. I'm, I'm, my flight's boarding. And I go, but my flight's boarding. Yes. And he just cruises by going, yeah, I don't care. And I go, well, why do you get to go? I don't understand. Huh. I'm like, we're boarding. Yes. You're putting us behind. I'm getting pissed. And he goes, well, I'm not missing my flight. I'll tell you that. I missed the flight already. And finally, a lady goes, hey. And she stands across the thing and goes, no. Wow. I'm on this flight. And he goes, well, let's go. Then go, you should go, too. And we're like, well, this is going to cause chaos. This is, the whole system's going to come apart. That's not how the world works. This is not society. We're living in a society. So there starts to be more pushback. And this lady starts going, hey, security, Ooh. security. He's cutting the line. Uh-oh, and he goes, watch it, sister. And then he goes, <laughs> he goes, why are you going to throw me under the bus? And I want to go, under the bus? So you admit that you're doing something wrong. Uh-huh. And he goes, well, you guys don't have the balls to take action. I'm what? taking action. Who is this like, wacko? It's about balls? What? No, we're living in a society. Yes, it's about consideration. It's about rules. It's about structure. And he starts, yeah, and it becomes a whole melee. Because there's wow. like a group of us going, no, no, why do you get to go? Holy And he hell. goes, well, I'm on this flight. And we're like, well, we're all on this flight. Yes. Everybody's on the same flight. It's the same flight, you kook. And he's like, well, I'm going. I don't care. I'm not missing my flight. I already missed a flight. And you're like, well, I've missed many flights. Yeah, exactly. Whose fault is that you're missing flights? You're probably uh, fucking some trollop in a hotel. You missed your bus. That's the way it goes. So we're like, why, why do you get to cut everyone? And then this is what made me the most furious. Mm. Finally, he stops where he is, but he's cut 100 people already. Yes. So then this lady goes, this, there's one lady that's like really fighting it. And she's like, you don't understand. And he's like, and they both think they're 100% in the I right. I know. Well, she kind of is. She is. She's like, you got to get behind everybody. You can't just cut everybody. And then he starts yelling back. And then this is the lady I hate the most. The lady at the front of the line who's like a you know, little white American lady with like thick Yeah, she looks like me, frankly. All right. But she's like, she goes to the, the guy who's doing all the cutting. And she's like, relax. She's like, why even waste your energy? Don't even waste your energy on these people. Uh, she goes, you want to come in front of me? She's uh, like second line. She goes, this come lady. in front of me. You can come in front of me. Don't even bother. It's not even worth it. And I'm like, why are you so on this guy's side? Exactly. He just cut 200 people. He's the bad guy. He's the asshole. Right. And she's like, you can cut in front of me. And I'm like, well, why does she? 
You're deciding that yeah. he gets to cut everybody in here. Yeah, who gave you the scepter? You can't. That's insane. Yeah, you're, you're not the, the leader here. And I've seen people late for flights in this situation, and here's how you do it. You walk up to each individual and go, I'm so sorry, my flight is bored. Would you mind if I went ahead of you? Yes. And let each person give them individual one at a time. Right. That's how you do it. It pisses me off because this lady thinks she's a hero. She thinks she's a saint. She's going to go back home and go... She's going to pull a, a, a hammy, patting herself on the back, and go, hey, I helped this guy. Nobody else would help him. They were rude to him. I stepped in. And Fuck she, you, you kook. She's acting like, we're asshole. She's like, don't even waste your energy on these people. I'm like, us people? We're regular people. We're missing our flight. And every person that goes in front of us, we're delayed. Of course. What if you cut me and I missed the plane by one second? This is a great little microcosm for society. And then there was another lady, and this lady... She goes, well, I'm on this flight, so I'm cutting, too. And she starts to cut out. And I go, what are you doing? Now we're in Why chaos. Why are you cutting? And then she goes, you want me to go behind you? And I said, yes. Yes. Get behind me. Because wow. I can't defend everybody else. But you're not getting in front of me. There so you go. So if you want to cut all those people, they can do whatever they're doing. Right. You ain't cutting me. You got that and right. she goes, fine, I'll get behind you then. Like, I'm an <laughs> asshole. Well, who are these and other like, That's sheep? right. What are these other cattle doing? Just, oh, they're afraid of an incident. Yes, the incident. Nobody wants to be the person yelling at somebody. So you can't, you can't even blame Mac and Meyer or whatever the hell his name is because this is just the way it's crafted now. And they it's not even their fault. They just go, oh, I have to be somewhere. No one wants an incident. I'm taking advantage. I, and like I said, if they went to each person and said, I, my flight is leaving. I, I'm trying to, could I, could I go in front of you? Sure. Sorry, same pitch. Could I go in front of you? Yeah. If you can make your way up that way. Or go to the border patrol person and say, is there any way I could cut to the front? Right. And if the authority gives you a permission, I guess, but I still think that's insane. Well, where's the guy with the machine gun and the and the full track suit on with the helmet and everything? Where's this guy? He should be going, whoa, whoa, everybody get back here. You know, shoot a couple shots in the air. You know, get a, a warning out there. Well, I, I guess they didn't have him. He was off that day or whatever. Maybe at Omicron. Aha. Uh -huh. But it was just a chaotic scene, but it makes everyone's blood boil. Of course. Your, your blood pressure is up. By the way... Every single person made the flight because they board so early. So then everyone runs to the plane. We all get on, and then we sit on the plane like this for 45 <laughs> exactly, minutes before it even starts exactly. to move. It's classic. So it's all for no reason, and you're like, it doesn't take that long to get through passport control. It takes like two seconds. I you know. come up and go, what was the purpose of the trip? Business. Okay, that's you. Stamp. See Stamp. you later. There you go. And there's three windows. Right. So it's like three people, probably six people per minute. Yes. And there's 40 people in line. That's pretty good. <laughs> but wow, uh, man, what an incident! So it now was you got to you sit on the flight with this guy, and he's like, "All right, I made it." You're like, "Yeah, yeah." Remember that whole fucking incident, asshole? And it was it felt good though that I was like, "Why do you get to go?" I don't understand why we're on the same flight. Yeah, why? And then he said, "You don't have the balls to take action," <laughs> and you're like, "No." You're an asshole yes. who doesn't care about other people. Exactly. And if we lived your way, we would have complete chaos. Completely, everybody would just get to keep cutting yes it wouldn't work society would crumble crumble but he'll never understand that that's what bugs me is the fact that it's not even that he's an asshole if he went up and was like i don't give a shit about you i'm making my flight fuck all you guys eat my ass blow me toodles i'd go i get it right i don't like it but i get it but this whole like well i'm not missing my flight that's what kills me the fact that he thinks he has some kind of valid reason right and also you want to be like don't you see that nine people are yelling at you? Because by the end, like, everyone was yelling at him. Like, aren't yeah. you the common denominator? Right, right. No one else is doing this. It's just you. And then the one lady that tried it, it felt so good. She's like, well, do you want me to get... She was of a similar persuasion. Ah, and she's that like, helps. Do you want me to... She's like, you want me to get behind you then? I'll cut out all these people. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're not in front of me. I don't yeah. understand how you would get to go in front of me. Right. I'm here. I'm on the same flight as you, so you don't have priority over me. No. You're behind me. That's what a line is. It's a line. <laughs> insane. Yeah. I, these people are like insane. You don't have the balls to take action. Well, you know who had balls to take uh, the 9 11 terrorists? You well, know? That's like, I, exactly. It's like going, uh, I'm at Starbucks. I'm late for work. I'm cutting to the front of the line. I have balls. Yes, exactly. No, you're an asshole. Yeah, you're a piece of shit. You're breaking the rules. And nobody wants an incident. Nobody wants to be on uh, the daily news. Exactly. So. Uh, man, that is infuriating. But you got your flight. Everybody made it. That guy turned out to be the pilot, I'm sure. And uh, all's well that ends well. Uh, exactly. We made the flight, and uh, you know, and you just want to like the the lady that was um, the lady that was like, "Well, I'm cutting too." And I go, "No, behind me," because she was in this row, and the, you know how it goes like this, the yeah. zigzag. So yeah. her stepping under the thing would put her in front of us. And that's why I was like, "Get back there." Yeah. And 
<coughs> we, sorry, COVID, I'm dying. <laughs> Let it out. So you got it. Getting off the plane at LaGuardia or JFK, she was like walking towards the cab line because she got her suitcase first, and we kind of picked up the pace to be like this. Uh-huh. Get my cab first. Fuck yeah. you. Yeah. And then, <laughs> so then you it felt go, good. I have balls. I'm getting this cab first. Well, we weren't in line yet, so I just uh, walked faster. Oh, you good. walk faster, you walk faster. You got that right. Well, you know, it's funny because people just want it their way. I was watching uh, Unsolved Mysteries, and this Ugh. lady killed a guy, and then she was on the run. And she kept going up to people, and she was like, I'm so hungry. I have no money. Bah, 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 bah. I'm cold out here. Can I? Can you help me? And she's like, no one's helping me. And I'm like, you killed a guy, you crazy whore. What's right. wrong? But she didn't understand that. This guy died innocently. You killed him. You stomped his lights out. But now you're like, the world's against me. It's like, no, no. You killed the dude. You're a murderer. Yes. But she can't see it that way. She's just like, I'm cold. That guy's in a pool of his own blood. You fucking skank. Anyways, it was quite a quite an incident. A lot of yelling and shouting. And just like I said, the blood pressure was just through the roof. Everyone's oh, like, yeah. And then you're looking at the person in front of you. Acting all like, hey, what are you talking about? Well, yeah. there's, there's something about travel where two things happen on in airports and bus stations and all this shit. Shitting gets way crazier. You ever go into an airport bathroom and it's just guys like, yes. it's, like it's like guys from shitting from Turkey and Afghanistan and Canada. It's all different kinds of crazy shitting. International shitting. International shitting is next level. It's just like dropping bowling balls in there. And then... Uh, tensions are higher. You know, you see the yeah. guy at the front desk going, I'm not going back in line. But, uh, you know, I missed my flight because you guys, you guys got to refund me or put me up and all that shit. So it's uh, it's it's elbows out there. Well, I don't know how to fix it, but it, there's just so much stress because, first of all, you run out of room. I, I saw somebody be like, at one point, tweet like, why would you want to be the first one on the plane? And you're like, because they run out of room. Yes. And you want to get your space above you and or sometimes the suitcase goes behind you. So then when you land, ah. you're like, hey, my suitcase is six rows back. And everybody hates you. So that's that's an issue. That becomes stressful. And then the zones, people try to go in the wrong I know, zone. And I know. It, it's just a goddamn fucking mess. It's a mess. And uh, the whole thing's very flimsy. Like, we have all these rules, all this security, all this protocol. But one one house of cards and the whole thing crumbles. Crumbles. Anyways, that was the the Germany tale, and I got a lot of COVID shit, too, but uh, tell me what's going on with your life. Well, I just... That took a long time. Oh, no, that's good stuff. That was a hell of a story. But I just got to say, you know, we did the whole family thing. We did a super spreader event. We had, uh, we went to Cape Cod to to hang out with the lady and all that good stuff, and her family is so much more normal than Uh, mine. Don't you you like that? You know, you you got your family. They're all whack jobs, and then you go hang out with your, your lady's family and you're like oh you guys are nice you have a real home here there's a dog running around it's like a movie yeah same we got the same situation going yeah it's like a john hughes film over here the kids sliding down the banister there's a tree with presents under it there's a ham in the oven you know it's beautiful and uh it's just great but i gotta tell you fatty i got nothing to say to these people ah i know the feeling and then you you're so desperate for something to say that you end up just your standards for conversation go through the floor Cause you just need something. I got a hot. I got something for you. Please, I'm dying out there. I'm watching the news. I'm I'm reading fun facts and tidbits just to try to throw something out. <laughs> All right. Well, I just I, this is for, for people like us because I always feel it's hard for me to connect with Ooh, other people. Often connect for. <laughs> I got a few people I really connect with, and some you're just dying. I Even know. people you're friends with, you're like, oh, this is awkward. Because once you run out of this one topic you talk about, you're like. Hmm. What do we got here? You yeah. know what I mean. So, uh, like, I, once I'm out of sports, it's the only reason I like sports because it gives you something. Sports are big, and my thing is, I have uh, so little to say that I know I have so little to say. So then I'm anticipating how bad this conversation is going to be, and then I clam up more. Right? Does that make sense? Of course. I'm so worried about. It's kind of like on on stage where you're like. That joke bomb. So then you try to say something else on that bomb. Now you're just trying to chase a laugh. Of course, you're deep in there. And then you're thinking about a thing you said seven yes, minutes ago. Yes, and you hate that. And you hate still, yourself. It happens on podcast. You're like, I'm talking right now, but I'm thinking about a thing I said 10 minutes ago. Totally. All right, here you go. I got the answer for you. Please, this, this is, is big. This is going to blow your tits off. You hear you? Listen to this, folks. This is going to save you on every family outing. So I follow this all these mental health things because I'm a mess. Hit oh, me. You lost your phone. <laughs> questions slash ways to authentically connect with people. Wow. This is going to change your life, I think. Send me the link, Dickless. I haven't had a chance to try it yet. Okay. 
Quote, if you could tell your younger self one thing, what would it be? Mm. So you ask your, your girlfriend's stupid fat aunt this. But is that crazy? They just uh, you, What do you want, uh, beer or soda? What's something you wish you'd done when you were a kid, you fat whore? I mean, I don't know. It just feels like it's kind of left fielding. It's a little left field, but it's beautiful because it puts her in a spot. She gets to think of something. All right. I mean, all what, right. what would be your answer? Say, I'm Aunt, I'm Aunt Betty. Okay. We're sitting there in sandwich. Betty White. Died. And I say, hey, uh, boy, the Red Sox really won the pennant that one year. Uh huh. Let me ask you this, Mark. I don't know you too well. You sure. seem like a nice kid. You're fucking my, uh, my niece in the ass you got on that Wednesdays. Right. Yep. Loves it up the pooper. If you could t- By the way, I just saw. Uh, Shelby's teeth for the first time ever. The guy smiled. Oh, he likes anal jokes. If you could tell your younger self one thing, what would it be? Mm, I guess I'd say uh, don't say the N-word on a podcast in 94. Yeah. Uh, well, that's something. What's uh, a podcast? Uh, you know, now you're off and running. All right. Okay. I like it. What's something you tell one. your younger self? That's just one. That's just one. Here's another one. Where do you feel the most happiest and most like yourself? Ah, probably on a gay porn set. <laughs> um... How is life feeling for you right now? What is on your mind? Mm. You could say that to her, your, your girlfriend's parents. They'll fucking love you forever. Uh, yeah, all right. This is good. Where'd you, gotta, where'd you get this? This is the the dot holistic dot psychologist. She wrote a book, it's, uh, but she puts it all on Instagram. All right. Here's another one. If you could travel anywhere in the world tomorrow, where would it be and why? That's a great one. That one's a little lighter. What did you learn about yourself this past year? What's something you wish more people knew about you? Ooh, 10 inches. <laughs> You're gay. All right. Yeah, this is good stuff. Well, there's a few questions. I'm going to try it. This is my New Year's resolution. I can't wait. I'll be fucking the mom before you know it. We'll be <laughs> connecting too much. How often do you think about fucking your girlfriend's mom? It's crossed my mind. And the dad. <laughs> you know, and the sister and the brother and the nephew. The sister. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Not, oh, boy. Well, <laughs> not saying, uh... I would, but, you know, everything of crosses course. your mind. I, I've thought about fucking Shelby today. I thought as soon as he smiled, I was like, oh, maybe. Maybe yeah. he likes us. I like when he doesn't smile. Well, you're in for, <laughs> I got a good news for you. <laughs> it's um, a lot easier. <clears throat> anyway, so you're in Sandwich. You don't know what to say. You don't know what to say, but you you push through, and then I'm, I'm doing a new thing. I've, I've actually caught, maybe I caught this from you, much like COVID, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm doing a new thing where I used to be very self-conscious, very worried about what people think. And I notice no one gives a fuck, really. And sure. I am used to be bad with kids because I would go, it's kind of like Seinfeld where he's like, hello, how are you? I was that way with kids. Yeah. And now I see a kid, I pick it up, I punch it in the stomach, I get in a headlock, I go, ah, what racial, what race do you hate the most, you piece of shit? That's, you know? that's one of the questions. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like laying on the ground, me and this kid are, I'm great with kids. I'm making him laugh. He's dying laughing. He's spitting up on me. I changed his diaper. I kept it. My my my, my little drawer there. It's great. That's fantastic. I mean, I love a good kid. You know me. I got a uh, little Joe out there. I go to see him out in Seattle. Yeah, you got a kid named after you for Christ, Jizz. I think I'm dying. <laughs> I'm still contagious. All right. Ooh, yeah, you don't sound. You sound like uh, Harvey Firestein over here. Well, you know what it is? <laughs> We're really getting worked up here. John. You got that right. <laughs> Shelby's dying. Shelby might be giggling for a second. Oh, that God. went away. Oh, Easy. COVID. We're almost done. The We're almost out got of the me woods. Chief. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, great time. <laughs> then here's the clinker. Left the parents' house to go to Beantown, where her sister and husband live. Uh huh. And these are good, good eggs. They got a nice house. We stay there. We play with the kid. We go out drinking. We go out eating. Uh, it's tough in these suburbs because you got nothing. I know. There's nothing to do except drink. I don't know how you do it. We'd, we'd start drinking at 11 a.m. Well, here's what I do, and we talked about this before. I'm a winter beach goer. This is what I did yesterday, two days ago, with the niece and nephew. I throw them in the car. I go, we're going to the beach. <whistles> we weren't too far from uh, your, your wife's neck of the way either. Uh-huh. We go down to Marshfield. We go to Hummer Rock Beach. And you go out there. The winter, First of all, it's unseasonably warm. It's like 50 degrees. Yeah. But you go down there. You watch the waves spray in. It's quite spiritual. You skip some rocks. You throw some rocks. You see the ocean. It gives you something to do. I guess, yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to have a beer in my hand at least. Just, just holding a beer or holding a cocktail it adds so much. Oh, I drink 75 ounces of water. I have the liquid oh, death, so it feels like something. Oh, that's good. I'm sucking them down like equal packets. I mean, I'm just crushing them on my head and throwing them. Send us some liquid death, will you, crazy coos? Get over here. Ruth, what is it? Ginsburg, what's her name? Colleen. Colleen. Yes, yeah, send us some liquid death. Yeah, you crazy whack job. We need some water in here. By the way, Colleen Quinn owns the Omaha Funny Bone, and Louie thanked her in the special. 
And like I, I looked at the uh, Reddit thing, and everyone's uh -huh. like, "Ah, oh, he's busting Colin's balls." Colin, uh, call me. He's like, everyone's tweeting at me. They think it's like a joke. Oh, that's funny. that. Like Louis, like Colleen Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what kind of joke would that be? Yeah, I don't get it. Um, I'm Margaret Normand. Woo! Stop the presses. <clears throat> that's comedy gold. But yeah, so uh, it was just a lesson in four days with the parents. Four days with the sister, and I'm talking intimate. They got a, like yeah. a smaller house, and you wake up, and they're right there, and you got to go walk to the bathroom. They wake up at five because they have a two year old, and uh, I'm playing with the kid. You're hungover. Being hungover with a kid might be one of the seventh circles of hell. Yeah, but the kids are nice because I find my family, I have the big extended family, and I can't connect with any of them. Mm. When the kids are there, it's easier because I find it easier to connect with a kid because I feel like a Agreed. kid. And you can just talk to them, and they're honest, and they're funny, and you yeah. can be funny. It's so easy to be funny. I'm pulling yes. my thumbs off. They're on the floor shitting their pants. They're completely genuine. They, they, uh, they just say what they're thinking. There's no filter. No, I love a kid, and uh, you know I'd like to date one because they're just so sweet. <laughs> they're great. They're great. They're innocent. Isn't that weird? This kid... Has no idea about uh, jizz, you know, herpes, uh, racism, yeah, Holocaust. It's nice. It's, none of that's in there. Lost love, breach of trust, all that stuff. My whole comedy set, this kid doesn't know any of it. Yeah. Kids in cages. Oh, I envy that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, so had a good time, pushed through. It was kind of a breakthrough for me, and I, not to make it about myself, but uh, then. It's your show. What? We fly out of there, and here's the, the rub. You fly out, I have immediate, immediate, uh, not clarity, Herpes. relaxation. Uh, you know, like, you're with the family. Peace, peace of mind, centered. Mm. I don't know, but it, you get out of there, and you're like, I'm going to a gig now, and you feel, ah, yes. you feel like a load is off. Now I'm going to go do my thing. The, the whole time... You're just sitting there going, do these people like me? Am I getting too drunk? I said something stupid. Yep. I'm bored. They hate me. I'm not part of the family. I'm fucking their daughter. Ah! Yeah, you get that comfort zone. Comfort. I do that because I was with uh, you know, my wife's family for four days. And then you have that thing where you're like, oh, you know what? I got to go to the bathroom. And we know what we had. We rented a big giant house, but there was above the garage apartment that mm. we had. So I kept being like, oh. I left my tea over yes. there. I'll be right back. I'm going to get my tea. Yes. And I just go over there and go, like, oh. it's like you have oxygen for the first time. Right. It's and, so true. And you go, you come back. But I had some connections myself. Like her brother's very quiet. And there was a pool table. He's like, you want to play pool? And he's never said anything to me before. So I was like, hey, all right, I'm in. Hey, that's big. So it feels good because you got to live with these people you for the rest make of your goddamn work. life. You so, got to make it work. But uh, yeah, and then we go straight to my family. Now we've switched positions and it's, it's tough because you're naturally a little more comfortable there, right. I guess. But you want her to be comfortable, too, so you're kind of doing a little legwork to help her meet with the family halfway. But, but the no drinking is tough. Yes. But also, for me, I put myself, I'm like, with her family, because I know where, for me at least, where drinking goes, I'd love to have that beer to be like, ah, this feels good. But I'm like, by 10 o'clock, I'd be in a blackout. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, you fucking dumb British cunt. You don't yeah. know what. And then the next morning, I'd be like, oh, I can't go down there. I oh, know, my God. I know. So that part. Makes it easier. That's another thing no one talks about. You're at these parents' house. They all get up early. They're all 78 years old. They wake up at 5. They farm. They do all this shit in the morning. And you just want to sleep till noon. I know. Because not only, even if you're not sleeping, you're just laying there in that cocoon, and you don't have to think of any bullshit to say, and you got your phone there. You're like, ooh, I'm watching a black guy get beat up on TikTok. It's great. Well, here's what I have, because we're in Texas. Now, <coughs> they all live in Texas. So every day is 70, sunny, the whole thing. Right. But we live in New York where it's just garbage during the winter. So I want to be outside every single minute of the thing. Ah. So it's sunny out, and I'm like, can we go outside? They're like, outside? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm like, come on, it's 65, it's sunny, we're yeah. in Texas, let's get outside. Right. So that's tricky, too. And all of a sudden, I'm a control freak. Not a control freak, but I want to do something. Yes, I can't. I can't just sit inside a Hate house. The sitting. And then her family's so smart. They're all they read like you wouldn't believe how much they read. I believe it. My <laughs> parents are the same way. These are two books a week, people. Oh, every hell. single one of them. So they're literally talking about like 13th century Scottish politics. I'm not joking. 
And you're just sitting there, and I feel like Costanza. I'm like, what about sports? You like sports? Yeah, right. I'm dying. And they're like, they'll like look at me, and I'm like, yo, yeah, yeah, of course. The Tilla the Hun, she was great. Right. I, I don't know what the fuck we're talking about. How about those kilts? <laughs> it's crazy. That's all I got. Uh, the golf. They invented golf. They know about the economy in like uh, the Czech Republic wow. currently. Wow. They're like, well, the Czech Republic crony is going down, so that's going to affect the thing. I get it, and that's impressive, but that does feel like a little bit of a waste of time. I Who guess gives a shit? It's all what you're into. Because I'm so. over here watching 48 college football. Right. I'm watching, you know, right. Tulsa play fucking Oklahoma. And they think that's a waste of time. And they go, they're Who going, cares? It's a ball in a hole. Yeah, exactly. They're like, what are you, an idiot? I'm right. like, I watched Goodfellas for the 300th time last night. Yeah. Did you notice his tie is green? And right, like, what? right. <laughs> so it's all pipes. It's all pipes, but... Uh, let me give you my New Year's, and we'll get the hell out of Dodge here. Sure. So we go to Milwaukee. <clears throat> By the way, Milwaukee's like, you're in sunny Tejas. I'm in uh, freezing cold Wisconsin. It's brutal. The fudge packers, the cur- cheese curds, the beer, the breweries. It's just freezing out there. Mm-hmm. And then the club, of course, is 18 miles outside of the city, so it's a 30-minute drive mm-hmm. into the town every day if you want to hit it up. Right. So we do the show. It's great. It's a great club. Big improv. Four hundred seats in a mall. Whatever. It works. The staff's amazing. I'm there with Umar Khan. He's a good egg. Killed it every night. AJ was the host. Great local guy. Finney? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Different AJ. Younger guy. Newer guy. But I like Finney. Love Finney. Finney's a good chooch. So here we go. We got our game plan. All right. It's Friday night. It's New Year's Eve. We got two shows. Seven. And 10, which means it'll end at 1130. Uh-huh. So now you got a half hour to fucking get it together by midnight and smooch your lady. So are you, do you have to come out and say, do the countdown? I didn't. I, I talked my way out of it. Because nobody wants nobody wants to sit in a mall and, and go, woo countdown, kiss yeah. your fat grandma. So <clears throat> I do my set. I hightail it out of there. We jump in AJ's car. We grab a couple of road beers and, and some whiskey. We jump in the car. We're going, ah, it's, it's 11.51. He goes, all right. He's running red lights. And he goes, I know a bar. We just got to get to a bar. We get to this bar called The High Note. It's packed. We get in there. They're doing karaoke or some bullshit. We grab. It's uh, We park illegally. We run in. It's 11.58. Boom, we get in there, somebody hands you a cocktail, you walk in, you dip your lady, ten, nine, smooch, you look around, you go, there's a bunch of ghouls and mutants here, let's get the fuck out. Nice. Now it's 12.02, we go to this bar called Stella, it's like a, it's a black bar, it's like out of um, Animal House. Ooh. Can we dance with the old dates? dates. (laughs) Yeah, that, it was that thing, but it was super chill, super cool, great time, you know, swigging booze and high fiving, and then it was a uh, one a.m. We said, "Let's go home." Ah. And it was the perfect New Year's. It was great, and we went back home and made sweet, sweet anal. Oh, that's nice. Love that first sex of the new year, which Woo. I haven't had yet. I just realized. oh, really? I was at my parents' house. Well, <clears throat> they could watch. Yeah, good point. But uh, yeah, I love that new year. You get home, you fuck, and it's the first one of twenty twenty two. It feels good, nice orgasm. Hotel too. Hotel oh. adds a lot. Well, when you're together for a million years, you need the hotel. You hope to have a mirror so you can watch yourself and yes. pretend you're, uh, you know, Bob Hope or Ted whatever. Ted Danson. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that weird though? Like, yeah, we'll be in our apartment all day long. And then right when we hit a hotel, it's like ah, it just turns into horn town. But uh, it's something about your dumb sheets, your dumb artwork, your dumb rug, your dumb cat, your dumb. Dick. Well, that's where you're regular. That's where you're like, uh, do we need toilet paper? Because I was wiping my ass and it was really bleeding like a sieve over there. Sorry about that again. <laughs> but uh, at the hotel, it, it feels sexual. It feels like an affair. Yes. It feels like something. You can picture the sister. It's a little bit easier. It's <laughs> jizz on the TV, the remote, the drapes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Hate the Drake. Um, <laughs> but I got carpet. <laughs> I got to tell my COVID tales, but I'll do it next. I'll tease again. Wait, what? Is this COVID stuff? I, I got a whole. Oh, swoop. I didn't know. I didn't know I was stepping on your Omicron. No step. I took forty five minutes to tell the uh, the thing, but the it's German. a good tease. All right, all right. Well, boy, hot up, fun time. Good to see you again. Happy New Year, and uh, we we got a studio. We're making things of ourselves. We killed the cat. We're living it up. We got a studio. We're doing a ton of bonuses. I got COVID still currently. I'm giving it to these guys, please, and. Uh, uh, yeah, get on the Patreon. Like we said, you heard the ad earlier. We're doing all kinds of new stuff. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. We yes. got new merch. We got the Greg the oh, Cat t shirts. Oh, thanks, Diego. Our friend Diego uh, designed some new shirts. Those are up on the website. The link is in the uh, wherever, somewhere, the link. I assume the link's in the YouTube and the podcast thing. Yeah. 
And uh, <clears throat> all the description. Yeah, YouTube, tell a friend, spread the love. Patreon's cooking. A lot of live stuff coming. We should do a live up sometime Absolutely. this uh, century. we got to talk to Liz. Uh, uh, Vancouver's been canceled, of course, because of Omicron. No Vancouver. I think Seattle's still on. I'll figure that out ASAP. I'm going to Dallas in January. Ooh. I forget the date. I'm sure that's on. Boy, you're, you're more Texas than Ted Cruz. You're down there every week. I know. In February 15th, I'm back in Houston. Secret group. Get your tickets now. Love and, that room. Uh, Boston in April. Laugh Boston. Uh, Patriots Day weekend, April 13, 14, 15, I think. Shelby, you're making a face. Did we lose all this? All right. We're oh. Fine. All right. I'll be at Bridgeport Stress Factory in Connecticut this weekend. Uh, Sacramento Punchline, Kansas City Improv, Syracuse Funny Bone, La Jolla, Ooh, uh, nice. Des Moines, Iowa. We got a lot of fun, fun, wacky dates on the blower. La Jolla's coming up in San Diego. All over La Jolla. Doing uh, Austin again for Moon Tower. That's later in the year. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it up. Thanks for listening. Keep being gay. Fuck your dad. We love you. Wipe your ass. Praise Allah. We'll see you in hell. Ready to say, cut it. No.